Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and uh, yeah we're once again in street class online A class racing so uh, yeah we're in the 2022 Rivian R1T for this episode so not technically the first kind of car that you're ever going to think of to race online but it's actually pretty good in some regards as you can see by the stats only real uh, downside is the handling but I feel like uh, the handling stat isn't quite you know representative of uh, what this car can do because yeah I've had this car in some tricky situations before and it's handled them fairly well so yeah we now have 919 horsepower so that's an extra 84 horsepower over what it had originally and we have now have 999 pounds feet of torque which is uh, 91 pounds feet of torque more than original so uh, yeah a decent increase in power uh, but, but obviously 835 stock was hardly a small amount so I imagine some people might well keep the power stock to upgrade other elements but I think I've got a reasonable balance between the power and uh, the handling of the vehicle itself so uh, yeah and it now weighs 6,231 pounds which is 705 pounds less than what it was originally so more power more torque and less weight so uh, the power that we've given it has uh, even more of a uh, benefit so yeah, let's uh, see what we can do against the likes of an Audi RS5, a Bone Shaker, a Mercedes AMG E63, and a Ferrari F355. Some pretty solid competition there. I think the Bone Shaker is probably the one to look out for. It is a bit of an OP car in this class, I believe. But despite being electric, we're hardly a quiet car. Uh, despite weighing as much as we are. I don't think we're a slouch either. Okay. Bit of understeer there. Bone shaker's not exactly got the best handling either by the looks of things. Though I imagine it is better than us. Maybe not, I don't know where it's gone. Leave them in the lead in a six thousand pound plus truck. But yeah, the brakes are pretty good for a car of this size and weight. And they need to be given all the momentum we're gonna have going behind us. wildly into the uh, tree there. Luckily we weren't far off a uh, slow corner so it's not affected us too badly. And we're definitely quicker than the Audi in a straight line despite it having a V8. We've got something even more powerful than that. we got electric power baby. See, this is what I mean about cars that you might not necessarily think of when it comes to racing. They, these kind of vehicles can be fun. I'm not saying for a moment that it's going to be the most competitive of vehicles in the world, but it can be fun regardless. And this is the kind of vehicle we're going to be missing out on comes to uh, the new Forza Motorsport. Which we will be playing on the 5th of October by the way. Not necessarily going to completely abandon this game though. Uh, I think that was a bit of a mistake when, the, you know, when we've had previous Forza Motor game, Motorsport game come out while, you know, we've still got a Horizon game to enjoy. Especially since, you know, the main game of Forza Motorsport isn't technically out until the 10th of October. And the 5th of October is obviously when uh, this game gets its next season in the festival playlist. So, and there is obviously a new BMW and another version of this Rivian to try out as well. So we're not necessarily going to abandon this car, this game straight away. Especially since there are also a lot of uh, cars I still want to try out on extreme off-road silly builds. Which is obviously something we can't do on Forza Motorsport. So I feel that would, uh, you know, have a decent variety between the two games 
But still, we got first place there by a decent margin, more than two seconds, and uh, yeah, that's probably the best performance that I've had from, with this Rivian so far. And uh, despite the bone shaker being a pretty OP of a car, it didn't even finish. So uh, yeah, you can't always expect the best to be the best driven. So um, yeah. But yeah, we uh, do have the BMW i4 coming on Thursday, which is an, another electric car from BMW. It looks a bit better than the iX that we've already reviewed, and hopefully will be a fun car to drive as well. So, yeah. But whether or not it will be as fun as this Rivian, we'll have to see. I've also lowered the suspension. Now, that's not something you can do via upgrades. It's only something you can do in the tuning setup. So, uh... Yeah, but I lowered it to uh, 12 inches, uh, the suspension travel. So, yeah, that's why it looks lower than it normally is, but that helped massively in terms of the handling and the body control. As, yeah, it doesn't roll around as much as it used to, and, yeah, it also means that the uh, car is better in terms of the corners as well. So, all good in that regard, and we can now do not 16 3.075 seconds, which is nearly, well, it's about 0.2 25 of a second quicker than originally, and it can now do not 107.503 seconds, which is just under 1.5 seconds quicker than it could do originally as well, and it can now do 183 miles an hour, which is, yeah, damn sight quicker than its 127 mile an hour original top speed, so, yeah, it's no slouch in terms of straight line speed, it's just the cornering that, although I can handle it to some degree, it definitely has its issues at times. And yeah, we're definitely going to probably struggle on this circuit because we're in tight, you know, tight city streets where traffic is going to be an issue, which we obviously also have to dodge. But we do have the weight to punt the uh, lighter cars out of the way. In a previous race, in my own time, I uh, punted a VW Beetle pretty much into the middle of next week because when it crossed the, uh, uh, crossed the road and I hit it side on get it a right big T-bone so yeah we can pump those lighter cars out of the way but a jeep uh, any of the jeeps, any of the uh, heavier cars yeah we're definitely going to struggle to do anything with if we need to but the priority will obviously be to avoid the cars but you can't always do that. Sometimes they come out of nowhere or they're on your driving line and you don't have the time to suddenly react. So, uh, yeah. Power out the corner. Side, power out to the straight. Where, yeah, even a Corvette, for God's sake, can't even keep up. Don't hit the building, that would be disastrous. Speed, speed, speed. I love this car. Can't wait to see what the R1S can do, the SUV variant of this. I imagine it might well be a bit better in terms of handling, because pickup trucks are notorious for uh, having some handling issues due to the lack of weight over the rear end, although that might not be quite as prevalent with this being an EV, where the batteries are generally right across the uh, bottom of the car. Speed, speed, speed. Avoid the car on the right. And on to a second victory. Can you believe it? I certainly can't. Especially given we're up against a Corvette and a Ferrari, which are hardly uh, bad cars. Certainly, not, certainly got better handling than we'll have. But yeah, there we go. Not quite as big of a margin this time. Uh, the Corvette is definitely a quicker car than the Audi. As you can see, that for some reason came in last place this time around. But yeah, that Corvette was pretty quick at times, but not quite quick enough in a straight line, that's for sure. 
And speaking of the Corvette, obviously we have the Corvette E-Ray coming to uh, the new Forza Motorsport game, and it's coming to this game as well, so that's another reason to stick with this game, is get to try out that in some regards, especially on off-road silly builds, so uh, that'll be interesting to see what that can do. And I am looking forward to driving it, especially since it's the first ever hybrid Corvette. It's kind of Corvettes have really come a long way in the last few years. We've gone from only being front-engine rear-wheel drive to mid-engine and rear-wheel drive, and now we're being, I'm pretty sure the E-Ray is all-wheel drive, and obviously it's got uh, the electric hybrid motor going for it as well. So, yeah, they've certainly, uh, you know, come a long way from their original kind of front-engine rear-wheel drive layout. This car though has race brakes now. It's got sport weight reduction, sport roll bar, sport drive line. It's got sport tyres that are wider and at the front and the rear, and the uh, tyre profile has also been increased at the front and the rear, just to make it a little bit better in terms of handling. Because for some reason, the uh, tyre profiles getting increased does make this better in terms of handling. I'm not going to question it. It's an easy uh, way of getting a bit better handling out of this car, and you know it also uh, is it doesn't come at a great cost of PNE. Either. So winner winner in that regard. Right, let's see what we can do this time around. It's a lot busier in terms of the, uh, the grid. Bone Shaker seems to be attracted to uh, AI cars because it's, I swear, the second time I've seen them do that. Porsche, which is a pretty formidable car on the side. See the portion with me being so big. On Shaker having major handling issues there. I'm gonna go slightly out in terms of the camera just so we can see that Porsche. into me. Losing me places. Um in a rock in between a rock and a hard place. I say these that he's been an arsehole. I don't really like coming online a lot of the time. Just deal with morons. Bone shaker and then this guy. Maybe the typical Mercedes are out. Well, I have to settle for last place after winning twice because people do not know how to drive. Oh well. At least I've proven the Rivian is capable in some regards. It's just not despite the amount of weight that it's got going on with it, not able to deal with cars that are far lighter than it ramming you constantly. So, uh, yeah, which is a bit of a shame, but that's just the way it goes sometimes, I guess. I'll send a uh, strongly worded message to Lucas310719 and SI9Hyrus being complete turds. But still, I really, really, really enjoyed driving the Rivian, and regardless of the arseholes that I just came up against, still got the first place overall, so there we go. Uh, but yeah, try out cars that are less, you know, 
likely to be winners because it can, at the end of the day, prove fun to drive and on the occasion be, you know, competitive in their own regards, even if they don't look like they will be. But yeah, nonetheless, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.